Hi everyone, True Sky is here and what an awesome add-on it is. And as always, or it's often the case with the add-ons of True FVX, it's super easy to use but hard to master. So I thought, um, so you can see a couple of exercises and examples I have um, created with True Sky and True Terrain. And I thought maybe some of you might be interested to see how I use True Sky and um, what my process is. So let's start. Um, as you can see, I have already prepared um, a simple landscape uh, with water and, you know, some sort of backdrop mountains. The composition is like this. I've got my foreground, middle ground, and then just scaled up and properly positioned um, mountains at the back. They're all from my height map pack. Um, there will be a link but um, down in the description, but that's not the point right here. So I used True Terrain to um, texture it, and right now it looks like this. So what I'm usually doing before I go into um, True Sky is I'm, as you can see, there's a lot going on, and I'm super happy to have clean panels which I might give you a link down in the description as well, which is just the best uh, end panel manager you can find. So let's go to um, True FVX. And before we use True Sky, I'm going to find a nice light position with Nishita Sky. So let's just rotate this until we have something that looks good, which gives us a good lighting of the foreground and also some details. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, like so, okay. So I've got a sun, sun elevation of 15 and a sun rotation of 310. And these are the only values I'm going to remember because I'm heading over to True Sky and just clicking the default one. And although this already looks great, the first thing I'm doing is I'm disabling haze and I'm disabling fog. Um, then I'm going to replicate my Nishita Sky settings, 15 and 316, what's that? Let's just double check. No, 310, doesn't matter. 310, 15 and let's, for the beginning, deactivate fog and haze. And I'm having exactly the same light positioning. Um, you will say, but it looked differently, Bergelmeer. And that's true because, let's just go back again, because my standard setting in the color management is medium high contrast. True Sky uses very high contrast. That's the main reason why you might see a difference in the look. That was 310 and that was 15. So before I fiddle with haze and fog, I'm heading over to clouds and I'm going to put my clouds in the scene. So it is extremely tempting to go through all the different presets and actually different clouds, but I'm trying to stick with one. And you know what? Let's just stick with the Stratocumulus. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm increasing the location speed multiplier to something like five. 
Um, what does that do? It increases the speed when I'm moving the cloud with the location, uh, with the location values here. Otherwise, it would be just a little bit slower. Uh, great for animation, great for fine tuning your clouds. But right now for the composition, I think um, a little bit more speed is, is not a bad thing. So what are we going to do? Let's increase the density. And here is the first thing that is also very important. Um, you can see here the volume. Step render 0.5 for um, the viewport and the render and maximum steps of 8. This is actually what the volume presets are defining or um, that that's the values that's, that are going to be changed. So I think it's fast from the beginning. If I'm going to fastest, it changes the values even lower. And the volumes, although you get great rendering speeds, the volumes are not that pronounced. So let's head over to highest. 0.01 and 32 and you can see although the volume in itself is exactly the same you give Blender much more details to render out which of course will cost your render time but these are actually pretty nice clouds but you can also see that the volume or the, the volume preset has an impact on your lighting and also the positioning of your clouds, which is kind of duh. But that's why I always handle fog and haze and actually the, um, the rotation of the sun after I've done my clouds. So maybe decrease the cloud amount. down and then move this until we get our clouds back um, and if you like me just made a blunder with the uh, cloud settings just click on the reset all to default and you're good so Again, let's bring this in like so and increase the density like so. Go to balanced. Balance is actually a pretty good compromise. And move this over here. Again, all the cloud settings look great so again let's stop it here or oh, maybe just something else and bring this back to 2000 yes okay now as you can see our lights have changed because the sun now or the light has now to travel through our volumetric clouds so i'm going back here and play with my rotation again to find a nice light positioning. I mean, this looks sick. Now let's increase the strength of this. go with this maybe bring down and a short sidestep for my friend honey west um, I'm going to put some snow on my back mountains there so I'm not really sure what the problem is but I'm just you know clicking my terrain go to my snow node click to use and 
we should see. Our snow coming in. There it is. And it looks nice, but I want the snow to be a little bit more up. So let's head over to snow slopes, advanced settings, and show crevice. We decreased this to 0.3. Yep, that looks fine. And now we're heading back to our sky because if we render it out now it would look a little bit better than the viewport obviously however we would have the same sort of focus or yeah cleanliness or clearness um, of the front as the background mountains and that's not what we want so I'm going to activate the haze and you can see already that the back is in this distance mist and haze. So that looks actually pretty good as is. Um, you could do, because these are the preset uh, colors, you could go in here and take your cloud settings here and the horizon colors pick it as, I don't know, this darker uh, cloud setting um, from here and the scattering will is kind of the density of the haze. So if we are, okay, that was one, let's go with two, let's double that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm pushing the haze back a little bit. So my front is really, so that's distance from camera. So the front is without haze and we've got our haze in the back. So that looks actually pretty good. And fog is very powerful as well but you can also see it fogs up the front as well and you can use that but be very careful so I'm bringing this a little bit back as well scattering is already at um, 0.1 so we can play with the anistrophy but to decrease the amount of fog in your scene you're just going to increase the air quality so you can see with one there is almost no mist um, available so I'm giving it an 0.8 and that's that um, this is how I that's how my workflow looks like so again first of all first initial lightning by Nishita Sky um, rotation and height um, copied by True Sky, then deactivate haze and fog, um, go and play with clouds, get some nice clouds in, um, and then go back and fine tune your light settings and um, haze and fog as you wish. I'm going to give this a render and um, let's take a look how this renders out. I hope this was helpful, useful for you. I'm going to make another video where we're going to use True Sky for a non landscape but outdoor scene, how we can utilize that. Um, maybe do some god rays and, and more volumetrics and atmospheric trickery, but that's the basic way I'm using True Sky. Hope you enjoy it. I know you will, and thanks for watching.